now the pot is ready. Let's talk about the most important part, how to properly eat hot pot. First, we gotta make our dipping sauce. I like to start with the whole raw egg with two tablespoons of sha cha, which is the Chinese barbecue sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of vinegar, one teaspoon of sesame oil, one tablespoon of minced garlic, or if I have no shame that day, or I'm not kissing no one, I'm gonna add more, and one teaspoon of sugar. If I want it to be spicy, I'll add in one teaspoon of chili oil and also some chopped chili. Besides that, we can also add in scallion and cilantro. There's no right or wrong way to eat the hot pot in my opinion, but there's definitely some safety rule that you have to be aware if it's your first time having hot pot. So first, when you throw something in the pot that you will not be eating it raw, you have to make sure you wait until the pot boil again before you pick up anything in that section. So for example, what I have right here is beef and shrimp, but beef is fine to eat raw. But when you put something raw like shrimp into it, you wanna make sure that it's cooked before you pick up anything in this section because those things get attached to other ingredients in the pot and you pick it out and eat it, you'll probably get diarrhea. Second, don't overflow the pot, especially when you have something like me, like the split pot. If you overflow, if you put too much soup or too much ingredient into it, when it start boiling, it will overflow and overlap each other. And the other thing is even you're not using a split pot, the water will overflow and sometimes it will ruin your hot plate. Last but not least, I believe we're more aware of the hygiene during this COVID crisis. So let's say if you're sharing this hot pot with someone that you don't wanna share your saliva with, you definitely don't wanna put your chopsticks in your mouth and right back into the pot, right? So here's the proper way to do it. First, if you go to a high-end restaurant or during COVID crisis, you probably do not want to share your saliva with anyone, even your family. If I'm at the restaurant, I always ask for these three things. First is the tongue. This tongue is for putting the raw food into the pot and everybody can share the same stick. So the other two are these two kind of spoon. One is for drinking the miso soup or whatever broth you have. And the other one is this one. Either is this or sometimes restaurant will provide you like a long chopsticks. It's like a serving chopsticks. These are shared within everybody in the table. So you don't need to put your personal chopsticks into the pot. So this is how you do it. You use the thumb to pick up the raw food and then put it into the pot to cook. And then when the things is done, you use this, the whole spoon, to scoop out the food that you want and put it in your plate. And after that, you put it back to the center so if everybody can else that want to use it can use it and you're gonna use your personal chopsticks to eat your food. The second, if it's not as formal, you're just eating with your family or friends. Like when I eat pop pop with my family, we never have a serving spoon or serving chopsticks. I never feel weird doing that, I guess, because this is my culture, this is what we do all the time. But there's a little trick that you have to know. If you put in raw food with your chopstick, it's fine, you know, I can pick up the shrimp with my eating chopsticks and then put it into the pot. But what you need to be aware of is when your chopsticks touch raw food, it could have some bacteria on it. So what we do back home, this is probably a little weird for a Westerner, but what we do is we cook our chopsticks. Of course, we're not like, you know, washing our chopsticks like this, but we'll probably be looking for something. And then at the same time, I'm washing my chopsticks, so I'm not eating the raw food with my chopsticks. The way I eat my hot pot here with my boyfriend is I just use my hand to pick up the raw food because I'm not eating anything with my hand and my hands clean because I wash my hand before I have dinner. So I'll just pick up something with my hand and just like toss it in like this. At the end, I'm just gonna use chopsticks to eat my food. And the last safety rule is about the egg. So earlier you saw me making my sauce with the raw egg. Um, this is what we do a lot back home. If your culture allows you to eat raw egg, but if not, you can totally just take out the egg part and use the rest of the sauce. It's gonna taste amazing as well. Now, let's talk about the order of cooking. After I make the broth and I serve the whole pot into the table, the first thing I like to do is look at my ingredients and see what is the thing that will take longer to cook. I like to drop like two or three pieces, depends on how many people. If it's just me and my boyfriend, I'll probably drop like four pieces. So two for each in all of the section. Because when it takes longer to cook during the meal, you will always have something that you want inside. So the way I do it is I put in everything, a small portion of it and fill it up and let it cook for like the first five minutes. 
and I'll start eating. And then I'll use my spoon to try to find like, oh, I'm looking for yam. I'm like, oh, it's all gone. I'll add in more yam. I think this is the better way to do it if you're not familiar with hot pot before and you don't really know what is cooked, what is not. For example, the fish cake. It can't look exactly like what it was before, but after it's cooked, it's a little more soft and a little more transparent. Like I can tell because I've been eating this for 20 years, but if you're not familiar with it and your friend just drop a new fish cake, you will be confused. You'll be like, oh, which one is cooked, which one is not. So I just think that's a better way, but I obviously, just like I said earlier, there's no right way or wrong way to eat hot pot. So this is just a suggestion that you can Follow if you want, but if not, it's fine. Just do what you like, you know? There's two types of items that you have to be more aware of when you're cooking. Unfortunately, my battery just died on my camera and we're back to the phone. The first thing is the meat and seafood. These kind of things takes very short time to cook. So I, what I would do is I'll put in my beef and then wait for around 20, 30 seconds and then I'll pick it right up to eat. And same as the seafood, like for example, like the shrimp. It's the same idea as the meat, like it couldn't be cooked for too long. If the shrimp get cooked for too long, it's gonna become like a rubber texture, you know? So when it's ready, I'll always just take it straight out. Even like there's like five of them, I'll probably put it on the plate or ask if anybody want it. They should take it out right away or else it's gonna taste bad later. And the other type of food that you have to be aware of when you put it in the pot is the thing that will melt or disappear in the pot. So use what I have today as an example. The winter melon is something that I'll be very aware of. Like it takes around probably 20 minutes to cook all the way through. When it's cooked through, it tastes amazing. It will melt in your mouth. But if you cook it for even longer, like 40 minutes or something, it will start to melt down in the soup and become a part of the broth. And by then, first you won't be able to taste the melon. You won't be able to take it out. And the other thing is when too much ingredients melted in the broth, the broth will become thicker and thicker and sometimes at the end it will just start burning in the bottom and when the bottom is burning there's no way out like the whole pot is ruined so this kind of thing you have to be more aware of but it's not that big of a deal but if you never had hot pot before you probably want to invite somebody that had experience so they can tell you what is ready what is not and how to order and stuff like that so don't feel too stressful if you have a help that's awesome but if not don't worry like the worst case scenario is that you ate some raw corn like it's fine just drop it back in you know cook it for a little longer just have fun, you know, have a good meal. This is like a social thing that we do a lot back home. Like when I have friends visiting Taipei, I'll probably go to hot pot with them. We're very used to the system. So we're like cooking and talking, chilling, taking pictures, having a great time. And you should too. Don't stress out for hot pot. If you think you can master all of the tips that I mentioned earlier, and here are some tips for politeness. First, if you have a split pot like this, I, I'm using the same broth on both sides, just for example, you know, like if you have a split pot like this, there's people is the double dipper. Like they will use the same spoon, they will go on this side and pick up some spicy mushroom and then use the same spoon to dip it on the other side, which is the not spicy one. If you're using the same serving spoon for two different sides of the broth, you will mix the flavor together. And this will be very annoying for the people that probably they don't eat spicy. And especially if people have allergic to some ingredients and you double dip it, you can mask things up big time. But if you're at home, you don't care, it's fine. We use the same thing at home with Dan all the time. But if I go to a restaurant, if I'm sharing with people that I'm not familiar with or I'm not sure if they have diet thing going on, I will make sure I don't double dip. And the second tip is, you know, we're cooking hot pot right now. The, the idea of a hot pot is there's a boiling broth, whatever soup it is inside we're constantly taking things out from the soup so it's definitely gonna drip and imagine 10 people surrounding a big table and everybody just dripping their weights from the pot to their plate the whole table is gonna be so gross so my suggestion is use your plate or your ball to help you picking up stuff so let's say if i'm picking up some fish cake, it keep dripping, right? If I just pull it out like normal, I'm gonna drip on my table and it gonna look bad. So what I do is I put my ball, bowl or spoon, whatever you have, and I'll follow it with me and I'll eat it like this. And if you think this is too much and you wanna learn some actual tips, what I do is I never pick up my balls. This is very simple. When you pick up an item, you see they're like dripping like crazy, right? So if you 
pick it up and you put it on the side of the pot and let it drain down, let the water drain down to the pot and you pick it up again, it don't drip anymore. So this is what I do. And if you're picking up something that is the shape is a little more funky, like let's say vegetables, like vegetable like this, it's harder to like drip off all the water. So I'll do like a little drop and pull motion. So when I drop it, the gravity gonna take all the water down. And then when I do this, it drips a little less. What we do is just we do this and then we pull it like that. There's no dripping at all. This is just some pro tip for you that if you want to go to a high-end restaurant or you want to go on a date like this, a hot pot date, you definitely don't want it dripping, right? So these are some pro tips for you, but it's not necessary, but it's good to know though, right? And the third thing is that when you're sharing a hot pot with other people, you normally only have a plate and your sauce ball, and sometimes you will have like a second ball for soup but when you're eating shrimp or when you're eating corn these kind of things have waste the core of the corn and also like the shell of the shrimp what you do is you just put it on the side of your plate if you're at a restaurant the server will come over and clean up your plate once in a while and they'll make sure you have a clean plate if not you can raise your hand and ask them to help you toss it out it's very normal and I think this is all for today. And if you like this kind of video, definitely leave a comment down below. So right now, I'm just gonna dive in and enjoy my hot pot and wait for Dan to come back and he will love this. When he, every time I say we're gonna have a hot pot, he's just like, woohoo, very happy. So I'm gonna enjoy my dinner right now and let's learn some Chinese. The word of the day today is huo guo, hot pot. So the first character is huo. Huo. The third tone, huo, which means fire. And the second character is guo, guo. The first tone, guo, which means the pot. So we combine the fire and the pot together is our hot pot, huo guo. When you go to a restaurant, you'll probably look at the menu and look for the broth that you want for today. You will see they use the simplified way to call the hot pot, which is something something, guo. They use guo instead of huo guo, it's just to simplify and make it easier to say. So if you say tomato huo guo or tomato guo, it's exactly the same thing. Let's try the word together again. Huo guo, hot pot. Thank you for watching our video to the end. If you like this type of video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make a video like this every Thursday, so remember to hit that bell so you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!